Hey y'all. What's up? I don't even know where my camera thing is. I am in my car right now. Um, I do not have the perfect conditions like I normally do, but I say, you know what? I'm not going to be sitting on this revelation that God is continuing to give me because he has made me a steward of the revelation regarding body image, modesty. Um, I'm just, I'm a steward of his word. I study his word. And so it's like, I don't want to keep sitting on the things that he's given me to share with you. So I got up, I'm actually in Dallas right now. Uh, me and my son visiting my friend um, and her kids. And obviously it would be too loud in the house if I recorded in there. Um, and I don't want anything to be distracting from this message. This is going to be very brief. I only jotted down a few notes. I've been sitting on this revelation probably for about a year. Um, and so I just refuse to keep sitting on these things because somebody needs to hear this. We all need to hear this. We all need uh, to know God's heart concerning how we are treating ourselves and how we are obeying his word in every regard. Like, you know, modesty, people just think, oh, it's not that important. It's not that big. But oh my goodness, the revelation that God has been sharing with me over the past year, like this is a very big deal to him as well. I mean, why would God mention anything about dress if it was not important to him, if it did not have a consequence, if it did not have something attached to it? Um, and so I am here to explain those things to you guys, and I'm very blessed to be able to do it. So I want to share a profound thing I learned, oh my goodness, that I learned when I was studying one day. Uh, I was studying about uh, Jezebel, and I it's just it's amazing. So I can't even remember uh, where scripture I was in, but I have an amplified Bible and they have all of these notes at the bottom. They have the parallel scriptures. So I'm really like a like I get into the word. I look at the definitions. I look at the Greek and Hebrew definitions, the original intent. And um, and so I just want you guys to know that this is a valid. I'm not going to get on here and say anything that I have not studied thoroughly. So uh, my amplified Bible actually has some notes about Jezebel and I was studying the scriptures where she is that's that's what I was studying in um was this I think King second Kings has some information about I have and Jezebel so I was studying in those books about her and I just want you guys to know something and this is this is gonna help you if you really have an ear to hear did you know that Jezebel is actually her nickname Jezebel is actually her nickname. It's not even her real name. So let me tell you guys. So, you know, we hear a lot of people talk about, oh, she got a Jezebel spirit. Or um, the women that, uh, women are like in a Jezebel spirit. And we see that thrown around a lot. But it's like, okay, what does that mean? Well, it means you have the nature of Jezebel. Jezebel was a manipulator she was a control freak. She controlled her husband. She was very wicked. She was very conniving. Um, is that a word? She was very uh, cunning and sly. She was very just demonic. She was like Satan. She was very, uh, she was like her God, you know, Baal. She worshiped Baal. And so anybody worshiping any other God is just going to be have a wicked nature uh, about them. Um, anybody that doesn't believe in Christ Jesus has a wicked nature. So she was a very wicked woman. Um, and she loved it. She loved being wicked. She loved her false prophets. She loved her sin. And so that's what made her 10 times as worse as any other, uh, king and queen because she loved her sin. She had no regard for God at all. And so I learned that Jezebel is actually her nickname. Did you know that Hebrew scholars gave her the name Jezebel? and in the Bible and the yeah so the Hebrew scholars gave her the name Jezebel and her real name was actually Isabel which means where is Baal so her name her real birth name given to her by her father um is actually from like their god like they worship Baal they were you know they were of the other nations that worship this god named Baal and so her very name had Baal written into it and she was very wicked you know so her name was actually Isabel I-Z-E-B-U-L which means where is Baal and they, they changed her name to match her actions and we see God do these things pretty often as well the enemy can give us names too that match our actions like 
so you know god he changed people's names like he changed uh saul to paul he changed um i think even uh peter was uh the rock you know he gave these people nicknames he called um gideon um man of valor when he wasn't a man of valor he changed abram to abraham sarai to sarah so god is a name changer and I believe it's because he just knows their destiny, right? Like he gives us different names that match our destiny or that match um, his call on our lives. And so Jezebel was the same thing. It was a name change that matched her actions. And the name Jezebel means lacking honor. When I, when I saw that, when I read that, I was like, oh my goodness, the name means lacking honor. So when people are saying, oh, she has a Jezebel spirit, it's not just that this woman is a manipulator or she's slick, she's conniving, she's trying to get her way, she's a control freak. It's not that she's just that, but they're actually saying this is a woman that lacks honor. Like she has a Jezebel spirit. And if you've been called that, I want you to really sit with it. Or if you behave like that, um, I want you to really like sit with that. Understand that Jezebel means lacking honor. And what does that actually mean? What does it mean to lack honor? Um, and I just think it's crazy. That's why, uh, like, it's it's like Tatiana, you know? It's like that that song, you know, Bust Down Tatiana or whatever. Um, like, because the name is Tatiana, but the song is calling her Tatiana because she's acting like a thought, Right? Like, these are things that we do. We change people's names all the time to, to match their character, to match what they look like. And so that's what they did with Jezebel. They was like, mm, Isabel, we're going to call her Jezebel because she is just lacking honor. Like, she is not, she's a manipulator, she's a liar, she don't got no respect at all. So what does, what does honor mean? What is it? Let's define honor. So honor means to have high respect and great esteem. It means adherence to what is right. It also uh, means to fulfill an obligation or an agreement. And I thought this was pretty interesting. This is a dated definition, but it's a woman's chastity or reputation of being chaste. And chaste means purity. It's a woman's uh, purity and her reputation of being pure. That's what it means to, to be honorable, to have honor. You have high respect. You have great esteem. You adhere to what is right. You know, adhere to the Bible. You uh, are a pure woman. You have a reputation of purity. You fulfill an, ag an obligation or agreement. Um, and so what does dishonor mean? Lacking honor is basically the opposite of that. It is a state of shame and disgrace. It is lacking respect. It is lacking esteem. It's humiliation. Dishonor. Fail to observe or respect an agreement or principle. So a woman who lacks honor, she fails to observe or respect agreements and principles. You fail to observe the Bible. You fail to observe God's truth regarding modesty or whatever else. You fail to uh, respect that. You, you fail to honor God's word and honor who he is as your heavenly father. And it's a state of shame and humiliation. It's not a good thing. It's a very humiliating state. When people call other women like a Jezebel spirit... That's a shame. That's humiliating. That's lacking honor. And I honestly would, would fear that people should be careful calling people these names because, you know, somebody might not actually be of that kind of character. You know, we don't want to be a bare false witness against somebody by saying, oh, she a Jezebel just because she looks different than what you think or just because she's wearing like makeup or something. I think we should be careful. It's really the fruit of what we're looking at. It's the fruit of why Jezebel even got this name because she's a woman who lacked honor in her actions. Uh, she controlled her husband. She manipulated with makeup. She um, she always got her way. She killed people. She secretly had like hits out on people. She was a very uh, wicked woman. And so for you, what does this mean for us? What does this mean for us? So, you know, a lot of people call women Jezebel. She got this spirit. So how can we not have the spirit of Jezebel? How can we be a woman who has honor in our life? How can we be an honorable woman? You know, um, nobody should be around here being called Tatiana when you're a believer. Like, 
your your fruit, the fruit of your life, you should have the fruit of the Holy Spirit. You should not be getting nicknames from people that you have a Jezebel spirit or you should not be even behaving like this. You should not be lacking any honor. You should not be a disgrace. You should not be humiliating. So how are you though? I would say a lot of women that are dressing immodestly, but they claim to be believers who don't think modesty is that important. You are under a Jezebel spirit. You are lacking honor. You are under Jezebel spirit because your body is being used for manipulation. Um, may you, not, you, you may not think that, but when you're being immodest, your body is giving off this vibe of lust. You are drawing people to yourself. You're arousing them. That is like a form of manipulation in a way. Even though you may not see it as that, you may just be doing it for you. Like they say, I'm just doing it for me. I'm not doing it for no man. But the intention that comes with it actually is very, uh, almost like a witchcraft thing because you're coming out here looking a certain way and now you have people like bowing at your feet. It's almost like a, a manipulation that's happening. And so women that are dressing immodest, you are behaving dishonorably because one, if you say it's not that important, but God's word says to be modest, then you're not walking in pride. And immodesty is rooted in pride because you're drawing attention to yourself. You're glorifying yourself. You just want people to look at you and see how good you are. You can't honor and glorify God when you are trying to glorify yourself um, by the way you're dressing. So I would say women that are that choose to dress that way are under a Jezebel spirit. So how can you not be under that spirit? First of all, you need to repent for disagreeing with God's word, you know, repent for being in defiance of him, repent for being immodest, repent for not seeing it how he sees it, because his ways are higher than your ways, just because you don't feel like you should be, or just like because you think it's not that important doesn't mean it's not, you just haven't come to the revelation of that, and now you're in a flagrant sin, a habitual sin, because you fail to get God's heart on it, you fail to ask him, you fail to really dissect why do I need to be modest, if you just you know, if you're a person who just lacks the understanding of it, you know, you're still sinning. God is not going to write you off and say, well, she don't, she don't understand it. Um, you should understand it. You should, if it's in the Bible, you know, first Peter three, three through four, uh, first Timothy two and nine, uh, tons of other old Testament scriptures that I'm going to be sharing with y'all. But, um, like if it's in the Bible, then it's important to God, right? Like why would he, if it was not mentioned like, there are even some things that are not mentioned, but when you study the scripture, it clearly has an indication of, like, what not to do. Kind of like masturbation. It's not said in there, but when you study the scripture about sexual vice, fornication, you come to the realization that that includes that. You know what I mean? So, we're not of the excuse of, like, just being able to do what we want, basically. But I don't want this to be too long, so I just want to share how can we be women of honor Proverbs 15 and 33 says, before honor comes humility. That's just like the parallel scripture, James 4 and 6. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So when you're somebody who lacks honor, you are proud. You are choosing your own way. You're being a foolish virgin. You, um, you, you're short-sighted. You just want what you want in the moment. You're going to do whatever it takes to have your way. Um, that's a proud person. That is a person that is exalting themselves up against God's word, up against God's truth to do your own thing. So if you want to be a woman of honor, humility comes before honor. You're going to have to be humbled. You're going to have to repent and say, you know what, God, I've been doing things my own way. I've been dressing in modest to draw attention to myself. I don't, I don't, I don't, I haven't been honoring your word or esteeming your word as true. Uh, so I repent and I'm going to humble myself and just say, you know what, I've been wrong. So repenting and just being honest about it uh, will quickly get you to be a woman of honor. And so God opposes the proud. You don't want to live in opposition to God, do you? Like nobody wants to live in opposition to God. We want all of the blessings. We want all of his goodness. And so humility, he gives grace to the humble. But he resists those who are proud and stubborn and want their own way. So, yeah, like I said, um, we glorify God by obeying his word. So, an um, immodest woman, 
you know, come to God and repent and say, you know what, I've been doing my own thing. I've been drawing attention to myself. I've been glorifying me and how bad I look, you know, and how good I can look in this world. But I'm going to humble myself and repent because I know God wants me to be modest. And then you're going to dress modestly and you're going to honor God with your body because your body is made to be a temple of God's Holy Spirit. Now you're going to esteem, be a woman of high esteem and respect because, you know, you look like a woman. You, you're respecting yourself. You're dressing in a way that's respectful. You're dressing in a way that's adhering to God's word. That is honorable. That is a virtue. That is something that God is not, there's no law against these virtues and these fruits of the spirit. So, I hope this was a blessing to you guys. Please don't be like Tatiana. Please um, take a note of yourself. Take inventory of yourself and pray and repent and ask God to make you an honorable woman. I have so many more teachings coming up about how to actually be a vessel of honor Um uh, teaching about it's, it's just so many notes that I've been sitting on guys so make sure you stay tuned and God bless you um, check out christianbodyimage.com that's my new tool it's an evangelism tool um, that I'm going to be sending out to women who are struggling with body image and self-esteem and they need to know who the Lord is it's, it's basically like an evangelism tool you're out here witnessing to somebody a young woman and you're like hey you should go to christianbodyimage.com um, it's going to tell you what salvation is they have a discipleship course they have a course about being made in his, in his image. All of that is free, and um, it'll really be a blessing to them. So God bless. I'll talk to you guys soon.